So welcome to the next in our online messages brought to you by the friends at Center Church in Linfield, Mass. This is Reverend Tom Bentley, the pastor, hoping that these messages can help you in your journey of life. If you'd like to know more about Center Church, there'll be some information at the end of this video. So thank you for spending time with us. So grace and peace to you from our friend Jesus. Epiphany is a season that builds in intensity, focusing on what's called the manifestation, the presence of God in various ways. This Sunday is Transformation Sunday. It's a story that stretches the imagination and makes one wonder. Let's take a look at it. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out, right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered, glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you. One for Moses, one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking, stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then a light radiant cloud enveloped them and from deep in the cloud a voice, this is my son marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. Coming down the mountain, Jesus swore them to secrecy. Don't tell a soul what you saw. After the Son of Man rises from the dead, you're free to talk. They puzzled over that, wondering what on earth rising from the dead meant. At this point in Scripture, what's happening is that the veil is being pulled back and the big picture is being shown. And the big picture has to do with much of what's been foretold in the Old Testament and discussed. Elijah and Moses appear. Elijah, because he was taken up into heaven in a bright, fiery chariot, and Moses appears, who was the one who had seen God in the desert, so much so that his face glowed. He had a light radiating from him. He actually had to wear a veil so that people could come and speak with him because his face was so bright. So the scripture goes. And so we have Jesus there too, beaming out this bright, radiant light beyond Moses, beyond the light and the cosmic event of Elijah. This is all of that and then some. This is what the scripture reading is telling us. And it's pointing in the direction of the resurrection, the big picture, this idea that God is putting together a massive transforming event for all of humanity through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. When we hear the story, we can't get our head around it. It sounds like science fiction. That's okay. But we can get our head around the idea that we're in the middle of a mystery, and this is a big part of it not knowing exactly what's going on beyond the minute moments of our day-by-day -day life. But the divine creative force of love in the universe has many things in its structural presence to advance through and with human beings and the rest of creation. And so what we're left with is not a clear understanding, but more like an ambiguity. An ambiguity where we can say, I don't get it, but I need to continue on in my life with some sense of purpose and faith. That's what this story can invite us to do. Yes, we have the big picture, but we don't get it. But can we live the small picture in our life in a meaningful, connected way to the wider, larger truth, the power of God's redemptive, healing love, the power of God's intent to draw us from the pit of death into the fullness of being promised through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. That's, yes, clearly a manifestation of the divine, telling us how to live in a time of uncertainty 
and trial and challenge. That's what this story is about. And it invites us to seize upon discipleship with a sense of purpose, with a sense of optimism, with a sense of assurance. So we can celebrate life after life. We can celebrate the immensity of existence with a sense of assurance that what we know as human beings is only limited, but the fullness of all creation is not. And God promises us during lifetime itself and at its end and thereafter, the fullness of grace. Can we lean on that? Can we lean on those everlasting arms, the cosmic arms, the arms of power and transforming vision? Sometimes that's what faith is about. Most of the time it's just trying to cope. But in all arenas of struggle, they come together with making a decision about who we are and what we can do, despite our ambiguities, our lack of understanding. So that's the message, an encouragement to become patient with uncertainty, an invitation to do what God is calling us to do without really understanding what's going to come to pass, living life as the miracle it is without fear, with determination, but also without really ever knowing exactly what needs to be done. Just rise to the occasion, listen for the guidance, and do the right thing, because it turns out the right thing is fairly straightforward. It's called love in the face of hate. It's called sacrifice in the face of things that come to steal that which is important in our lives away from us and others. It's about being, yes, heroic, in the midst of the conflict, knowing that victory is assured through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's world without end. Amen. So thank you for spending time with us. If you'd like to know more about Center Congregational Church, you can go online at center-church.org. You can also contact us at the telephone number above and the email address above. So peace and best wishes. Goodbye.